Hi, welcome to the Shelly Studio, and today I'm working in my Dilusions journal. I'm going to create a little page, playing with Dina Wakely Heavy Body Paint. Um, some is thick, some is thin. This is old stuff, got on clearance, so... <laughs> um, sometimes it's a little difficult to work with. But I'm trying to use it all up since I bought it all. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be like a multi-layered kind of page. I um, saw somebody create something similar to this and really wanted to give it a try. And she referenced um, Megan Quinlan, I believe her name is. She's a contributor on the Ranger, Ranger blog. So if you want to see that, um, I think it was several months ago. Um, if you've ever been to their blog, they have little blocks that say... Um, projects you may have missed. Um, hers, the one I'm referencing, is under the purple, if that helps. I'm not sure what time frame they were from. It doesn't have, but it just has a picture. It says you can click for um, more information, but it just goes back to that same spot. Anyway, um, Mine is a little bit brighter in color <laughs> since I'm using my bright um, Dina Waco paints and a little bit of the Dilutions paints as well because um, I use what I have and I wanted some blue. So there we go. So I'm just basically covering a few pages before I get started um, because I'm going to want, and those were dry before I flipped it. You just don't see the. Uh, and drying process. Anyway, so I'm taking three or four pages. It's a good way to fill up a journal fast. <laughs> um, so basically three full spreads. Four-ish pages, I guess. Um, because I'm going to be cutting in or tearing into two of the pages and then putting something on the two side flaps. You'll see what I mean here soon, I hope. Decided that one was getting too dark so I had to add a little bit more of the light blue, the turquoise. And had way too much paint on there. And decided I needed something bright, so we're going for yellow. And um, I was doing yellow and pink. And, and see how stiff that paint is. And I was getting a bit of an orange, so I decided to add some of the cheddar. And I'm just working it to get it all blended in. any of the hard edges. I want it just to be sort of blended. So there we go. Okay, so now that it's dry, um, with the idea I had in mind, I needed a face. So I am going to draw one. <laughs> Not my strongest uh, skill, for sure. Um, I guess I could have collaged one, but I didn't really want to collage. Um, I just like creating my own stuff, so had to draw it. Just had to force myself to create it. And I'm using a Stabilo All pencil. I figured um, I could activate and seal it with some matte medium. So that's what I'm doing, is putting some matte medium and a paintbrush and then just going around and it creates a little bit of a bleed but the matte medium will seal it once it's dry which if you don't notice things like that little spot hanging down 
on her nose. Right away, it will dry and become permanent. <laughs> Which it does. Because I was flitting around and didn't notice. See how simple that is to get, uh, I don't know, I think it's a halfway decent face. <laughs> so I'm not sure what day this video will air, but how are you all doing? Um, as I'm recording this, it is second week in June. Lots of stuff going on in my part of the world. Well, in the United States, I don't know where you're watching from. Um, I live in a small town, so it's not quite so crazy here, but lots of things going on. Hope you are all safe and well. Just adding a little bit of color. Decided I wanted her to have some of her purpley blue eyes. <laughs> they just kind of look blue though. There we go. Now this was supposed to create some sort of brownish color without being too strong. Um, I don't know. It's a little gray greenish color. I don't know. <laughs> So I'm going to give her a little bit of a highlight. Um, I feel like, you know, when you put that on for the first time, you're like, oh my gosh, that was the wrong thing to do. But um, eventually, it looks okay, I think. Um, she did need some highlights. A little bit of lightening up. All right, so now she's done, I am going to create a frame around her with the other page that I painted. So I'm trying carefully to cut this. It's not perfectly straight, obviously, because I just eyeballed it, but it works. And then, I'm going to actually tear a hole, which is, it's hard to tear a hole through this paper. <laughs> so I just want to get it started. And I just want to make sure we can see her eyes. So that's the point, right? Eye contact. Okay. Alright, so now I've got this paper to work with. I'm just going to make some shapes. Out of it. To, and I, I did some circles and out of just the scraps, the innards of those papers. And now I'm just, this is, um, I believe this is Tim Holtz stamp set. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. It's just got a lot of fun 
distressed sort of patterns on it. And I'm just giving some interest to those pieces of paper that I cut up. And I believe I did it to both sides of them. And then here I'm just going to add some interest around the page. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is collage these elements back onto the frame. This will, um, it makes it more interesting for one, and it will help support that page, which would otherwise just kind of tear up, I think, or fall apart or something. And no real set in mind, just had the example of the um, other creator. Did I say her name was? Wendy? Um, her picture from the blog. And she just did solid circles around her frame. But somebody, the other person that I saw that sparked it had um, the open circle around the eye. Um, I wish I could remember who that was so I could give you the link to her video. You could see what she created, but I don't remember. It's been too long. <laughs> the glue I'm using is 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac. Um, I think it holds really well, but it's a little stringy. <laughs> And I'm just kind of linking these together to help support the page again. Just kind of keep everything together. Got one more circle. And that's a good spot for it to support the page, I think link some of those circles together. There we go. See, so you could do that and be done. That's cool right there. <laughs> but I I think I was my goal was to use up some uh, pages. <laughs> I've had this journal for a really long time and um, I finally just working on it trying to fill it up so yeah this is not the only one like this I do the other one um, only has three pages where this one was four um, so it only has one middle flap I think if I remember correctly <laughs> so I cut out freehand cut out the letters the art of eye contact and then decided I would use those letters and just glue them on some of the words onto the different pages. So I figured I'd just put art here. And then we've got to put something on this side. So um, I do cover it in yellow paint and there's a butterfly or a moth that has like um, circles on their wings that kind of look like eyes. You know, I really should have looked one up and referenced it to do this. But I didn't. <laughs> I just figured I'd make it up in my head. Um, and it's not a very good butterfly. <laughs> Someday I may glue one over the top of this, but for now it's staying. <laughs> it's a little lopsided. But yeah. So yeah, since this is Stabilo All and it's on acrylic paint, I can just wipe off my mistakes. Nice, right? So do any of you guys know this butterfly I'm talking about? Yeah. And then I decide I was thinking I would keep it with Dina Wakely Media. Um 
the uh, scribble sticks we're not cutting it I mean I do go through this whole thing and try to work it out but I didn't like it much As you see, as I go, it gets worse and worse. <laughs> cornier and cornier looking. Like I should have stopped a long time ago. <laughs> okay. So here's where I decide. Yeah, this butterfly is gonna be brown. And I was going to spare the eye and then decided I didn't do a very good job. So we're just going to cover it all up and start over. <laughs> so this is why the butterfly ends up being a brown butterfly. I, st I still think it's a moth. It's a moth, right? And those scribble sticks do, I mean, they say they're, they don't have wax, but they do kind of resist. So they do make a little bit of a under layer and affect the brown paint on top. Don't know if that's good or bad. Like I said, one day I might find a big or print a copy of a big butterfly or moth to stick over the top of this one. <laughs> and I'm going in with Posca and I do have to do a couple layers of the Posca to get that to stay white. And the same with the blue. Oh, and look. The Posca is causing the um, paint to lift. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so hot mess moth. <laughs> I'm just going around the edges trying to redefine everything. And trying to spell out some words here. Okay. So I think I put eye contact on here. To weigh that down. Because everything is sliding off. And then I'll get those all glued on. And don't make you watch the whole thing. But there it is. What do you think? If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.